It's the Mumbo number six tonight for Botafogo as the Alvinegro puts six goals past Aurora from Bolivia in the Libertadores Cup. Now Botafogo moves on to the next round in an all-Brazilian showdown against Red Bull Bragantino to see who will make it to the group stage of the competition. Botafogo beat Aurora tonight six goals to zero with stellar performances by Chiquinho Suarez and Junior Santos that scored four, four goals tonight against the Bolivians. Chiquinho Suarez had an amazing, amazing match with assists and one goal. The other goal was a wonder goal by Savarino. An incredible play shot in the top left corner of out on a skipper and really no chance to save that that shot right there. That was the third goal from Botafogo, if I'm not mistaken. And there were so, so many goals, I, I can't keep track of them all. If Thiago Nunes was sacked, then who was on the sidelines there for Botafogo? Well, that is Fabio Machias. He is the permanent member of, of like the, the training squad. He's like an interim manager right now. And he usually falls back as an assistant throughout the season, but an assistant that is part of the club. Most of the times when a manager is hired, he brings in personnel with him, usually four or five, maybe even six um, personnel. But uh, Fabio Machias is Botafogo's own professional. So just in case something like this happens where, Chi, where a manager like Thiago Nunes is sacked, then he steps up to the plate and takes care of the trainings and, and basically being a manager until a new manager is hired. So with Fabio Machias on the sideline, we got to see the first taste of what it would be like this past weekend when Botafogo played the last place team in the Carioca Aldax and Botafogo beat Aldax with the Good performance, uh, nothing crazy, but we saw uh, Fabio Machias do simple things that Thiago Nunes couldn't do. Uh, a, a, a guy was with a lot of experience like Thiago Nunes just making the really bad decisions when it comes to substitutions and, and playing. And Fabio Machias just came in and did the, the basic stuff that I don't want to call it basic because he, just, he did what a good manager would do. He played players what they're supposed to play. The substitutions made sense. He even put uh, Mateus Nascimento as a secondary striker, which is a position the Botafogo fans have been asking for so long because of his characteristics. He's not really a target man. Mateus Nascimento has got a little bit of you know, skill, uh, dribbling skills and whatnot and good vision and this and that. So we wanted to see him in a, at the secondary striker, almost like a center attacking midfielder. And Fabio Machias did just that. So it was good to see. It's good to know that we have a professional of that caliber uh, in the club. I think it's it's great. It was a great move for Botafogo to, to bring in this guy. He, he's sort of a new hire. So I, I'm, I'm very glad to have him aboard. And, and with that match... And the one tonight, the focus scored six goals past Aurora. Granted, Aurora is not that big of a um, opponent. They're they're not that great. Um, they're they don't even I don't think they're even doing well in the Bolivian Championship, which is a subpar tournament compared to the Brasileirão. So um, I it was really. Nothing more than Botafogo's obligation to win against Aurora tonight and to win well, and that the club did, which is a good thing because the supporters showed up to the Newton Santos today. It's it wasn't you know the thirty forty thousand sold out forty thousand uh, at the capacity of the stadium, but it was about twenty five thousand uh, paid uh, supporters that showed up. So there was probably a little bit more than that. But 25,000, there was a, a section of the stadium that was completely full. Uh, and Botafogo did a beautiful, not the, the, the supporters, there's, uh, there's a movement, there's a group called Movimento Ninguém Ama Como A Gente. It's, it's a movement that says nobody loves like us. It's a phrase for Botafogo. And these group of supporters showed up at the stadium the day before and set up a beautiful 
beautiful mosaic up in the stands. I'm going to put the picture up here so you can see what I'm talking about if you did not get to see this image yet or you did not watch the game. Botafogo scored very quickly, very quickly on with Junior Santos. Uh, less than three minutes in, it's about two minutes and 27 seconds of the match. It was very quick. The transition from the point where Botafogo got the ball to where we took it to the attacking half and scored was a 10 second transition. So it was very fast, very good goal. And then after that, Chiquinho Suarez scored, Salvarino scored, and then Junior Santos scored all the rest of the goals from there on out. So I'm very happy with the performance. I think it was a performance that, that helped the squad, the players, and the supporters up in the stand to kind of sort of make up. There's still that, you know, 10,000, 12,000 supporters that were showing up when the club was doing amazingly well at the Brazilian last year. So uh, those people are not back just yet. But I think against uh, Red Bull Bragantino, it's going to be a, a massive game. It's going to be next Wednesday again at home at the Newton Santos Stadium. And it's a match to put 38 to 40,000 people on the stands because the winner of that goes straight into the Libertadores group stage. And we need to be there. But Fogo has to be at that group stage. So we will see. I hope that the supporters that watched it from home that, that quite haven't really made up with the club just yet. I hope this helped convince them that the, these players are trying hard because they did. They played amazingly well today. Um, you know, even considering the level of the team that we played against. But nonetheless, it was, it was a really good match. Uh, so who is Botafogo going to hire? as a manager from here on out. There's a few names like Pedro Martins, uh, Carvalhal, and there's other player, uh, other, other managers about the Fogo apparently, allegedly, uh, made the first contact. A couple of them said, you know, not interested right now, like Hui Vitoria, who was a coach for uh, Egypt this past African Nations uh, tournament. He said, you know, I'm gonna, uh, I just did this job. I'm going to take a break. There's... Um, there's Jahajin, believe he's the coach for Monaco. I think he's a coach for Monaco, and apparently he costs too much. So we will see. Pedro Martins is currently under contract from a Qatari club or a Saudi Arabia club. I'm not too sure exactly which one it is or what country uh, he's working at now. And I think Cavalhau is does not have a club since the last time he left his last club. So we will see. I think Pedro Martins would be the best choice out of the two. Just my personal, uh, my personal choice. But I hear Carvalhal has a lot of theory-based training sessions. He likes to tire the opposition out. He likes to play the ball, kind of do sort of like keep away rondos until a space open up. So if you're here on the right, something doesn't work, send it back to the defense, send it to the left and start over and basically just do that to tire out the defenders that are trying to get the ball. So an opening will present itself for the attack. But that's kind of the style of Cavalhau, so sort of like, you know, Bruno Lage in a way, but Bruno Lage did not have time to implement that at the club. And he came in at a time that um, perhaps there was a lot of pressure, um, which granted, it's, to some was an easy job, right? Just maintain what Luis Castro was doing, and Botafogo would have perhaps been champion. Bruno Lagi, as he went along, he just kind of sabotaged himself. And I've talked about this before, but, you know, Cavallao and Bruno Lagi wrote books together. So they have sort of the same mentality, same philosophy when it comes to, um, to how the, the sport is played and how they like the sport to be played. Um, I think Pedro Machins is more of an offensive uh, style coach. He's got about 48, 48 to 50% uh, win percentage, which, which is good. Good. It's not bad if you think forty-eight percent wins, but you got to think about all what are all of the other teams doing as well, right? If you're looking at the Premier League, the top twenty, yes, I know it's the Premier League. It's completely different level. But if you look at the Premier League, um, you'll see that there's some outliers like Sir Alex Ferguson with sixty percent win rate when he was with Manchester United. But that was also Manchester United golden era. And then you look at the top twenty. 
Number 20 sits right about 46, 47% win percentage. And that's top 20 of all time. So Pedro Machins coming in at 48 is not necessarily bad, especially he had a 65% win percentage with Olympiacos when he was there uh, not so long ago with, funny enough, Cavalhau was the one that took after, um, that took over Olympiacos after Machins left. So we will see what the future holds as far as the manager is going to be. There was negotiations happening, but unfortunately, last weekend, uh, if you don't know, John Texter's mother um, ended up passing away. So there was a pause on everything for about two to three days. Um, so our, my deepest condolences to John Texter. I already said it on, on the social media pages for Glorious Botafogo, but I just want to say here on video, I'm very sorry for your loss, John. Um, this is a very, um, it's a very hard thing to go through, you know, the passing of, of the mother, you know, the one that basically keeps the family together, gave life, you know, gave you life and, and so on. So, um, very sorry for your loss. Uh, I hope that you, you're at least doing, doing better to, to do what you do best, right? Which is manage these clubs with, um, Olympique Leo and I doing so great right now with five straight wins. Uh, five wins and one draw these past few games. Did an amazing win through the uh, uh, Coupe de France. Uh, they beat Strasbourg this past um, this past Tuesday, I think. Yeah, I think it was on Tuesday. I think it was yesterday. Uh, with an amazing performance by Lucas Pehi, a former Botafogo keeper. So, anyways, this video is going on way too long. If there is any new updates about a, a signing, I heard there was a player already ready to go and signed, but apparently that's going to be, it's going to have to wait until the middle of the year uh, for them to actually go ahead and, and sign the final paperwork and the coach, the manager. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to comment. What did you think about the masterclass against Aurora and who do you want to see as a manager from here on out?